Hello explorers, today we are highlighting a recent trip to the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia. Why don't you guys take a minute and come on along with us? On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces in one of the most pivotal battles of World War II invaded the French coastline at Normandy in order to propel the German soldiers out of Western Europe and open the way for victory. The D-Day National Memorial, which was a congressionally approved memorial, was dedicated on June 6, 2001 by President George Bush. This memorial was constructed in honor of those who died that day, fighting in one of the most significant battles in the history of the world. This monument receives an average of 60,000 visitors a year, and it is a structure that encompasses 88 acres at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountain. The grounds of the monument takes visitors along a journey which describes the politics and perils that were going on in World War II, and it pays tributes to the men and women who serve their country and the world in this very dire battle. Just giving you an overview of it here. These flags represent each of the countries that fought. In the center of it stands a huge 44 foot tall arch which is embellished by the name Overlord that was given to the crucial D-Day operation. It is also highlighted by a reflecting pool that surrounds a captivating sculpture, which is symbolic of the trudge the soldiers made across the beaches. Normally this pool is filled with water. Of course it's winter time, so I'm imagining that's why they don't have it going. And if you look those little spikes that are sticking up right there, they actually um, spray up, a they're little fountains that spray up a jet of water and simulate um, bullet fire that the guys were taking on the See beach. how these represent what the bunkers with the machine guns were as they were stationed above the beach. Because this overlooks, see, the representation of the beach. Bedford, Virginia was chosen because this very small town provided a company of soldiers to the 29th Infantry, Infantry Division, activated on February 3rd, 1941. There were still some 30 soldiers in that company on D-Day with others from Bedford and other D-Day companies. At the end of the day of invasion, 19 of the company's Bedford soldiers were dead with two more dying later in the Normandy campaign. Bedford's population in 1944 was about 3,200 at that time. This Proportionally, this community suffered the nation's severest D-Day losses. Therefore, Bedford was recognized as the emblematic community whose citizen soldiers served on D-Day. Here is a screenshot of the National D-Day Organization website, and it has a listing and pictures of all of the Bedford boys. The final memorial required 8,000 cubic yards of concrete, 900 tons of granite, and 30 miles of electrical wiring with 6,000 tons of stone supporting the 300-ton Overlord Arch. The reflecting pool is designed to hold 50,000 gallons of water. While at the memorial, I came across the plaque honoring the U.S. Army Air Force flight nurses and their role in the D-Day invasion. 
As a retired OR nurse, I was intrigued and had to look into this more. What I found was that these nurses flew an unmarked combat C-47 transport aircraft, which accommodated 14 stacked stretchers hanging from straps along both sides of the aircraft. They were trained to care for the wounded soldiers during their medical evacuation flight from the forward combat zones to rear safe areas where they might where they would have hospital care. This was just amazing to me that what these women had to go through at that point in time. It is important to note that the C-47s were unarmed but were protected by fighter aircraft along their channel crossings and while they were on the ground in Normandy. This new World War II concept of air medical evac from the frontline combat zone, cared for by trained flight nurses, was a very big success both in Europe and all theaters of the war and saved many lives. The D-Day Operation Overlord was a total success and marked the beginning of the road to victory in Europe. Here is some information on how you may purchase tickets and what the admission fees are as well as their operating hours. And one thing to, to be aware of is there are um, complimentary guided walking tours that are available there daily between 10 and 4 p.m. and they take about one hour but I would recommend you doing that because the guides that are there are very well informed and they can answer pretty much any question you might have. Well, thanks for watching and we're planning our next adventure. We hope you'll keep following us. Hit like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit notify. That way you'll know when our next adventure is being released. So come on and continue to be part of Meemaw's Planet, explorers. Bye-bye for now.